Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create with your watercolors and your beautiful stamps, how to create the look of a vintage postcard for the front of your cards. So we'll be creating some standard A2 size cards with this technique. Now before I go any further, I just wanted to mention that I will have a full supply list at the end of the video up on screen. So if at that point you want to check out anything in more detail, like stamp names, numbers, colors, inks, everything will be listed. You can just hit pause and check it out in more detail. Now I'm using Distress Reinkers used as watercolors, so I've just put a little bit on my palette. And this is a piece of Canson 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I'm putting a very light wash of water on this. Then I'm using some gathered twigs, Distress Reinker, diluted with water. And I'm just painting this onto the card. And this gives that old paper sort of distressed look. It does not need to be perfect. Just some swipes of paint across that. I went ahead and dried it and now I'm watering that down and adding some splatters just randomly onto the background. Not too many but just enough again to give this an old paper look. If they're a little bit darker than you want just dab them up with a paper towel or a soft rag before they dry. Now I'm going to stamp our Cling Stamp Splendiferous. I just love this stamp and I'm going to stamp this along the bottom of the postcard. So you can use your floral stamps in lots of different ways and positions. So here we're just getting part of this stamp. I'm stamping this with Memento ink in the color of Toffee Crunch. And this is just going to give us sort of like a no line watercolor look, but it's very easy because it's not hard on the eyes. I feel like I can really see what I'm painting and the lines don't get lost as I'm painting, but when it's completely done, you don't have these bold black outlines to the image. And I think again, that adds to sort of that vintage postcard look. So I'm stamping it a couple of times using my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. That just allows me to darken up the color and also get a couple of impressions onto the texture of the watercolor paper. Now I'm going to paint this again using the Distress Reinkers used as watercolors. I love with these that the color is very bold and it goes over the background really well. So because the ink is very concentrated and very bold, I can paint that whole background with that light brown color and still have really rich, vibrant colors on the tulips when I'm painting over that brown background. So I'm putting my darkest color in the areas I want to be darkest, going back and blending that out with some water. Now all of the exact colors used will be listed, like I said, up on screen at the very end of the video. While it's wet, I'm adding some touches of a darker color here and there, and also trying to be mindful to leave some areas of a light as well. Now I am drying this before I move into the next area up at the top of the tulip. That way I'm not working with too wet areas of the petal that are touching. So I can add darker color here now without it blending into the other two petals that I've already painted. So you just want to be careful you can, sorry about my head, you can jump around in your image and your stamping so that you're never working on two adjacent petals that are both wet at the same time or you can use your heat gun to dry those as you go. So I thought in this video I'd just show you, I promise that head will get out of the way, there we go, <laughs> and um, the orange as well as the pink, and then I just follow the same technique throughout the rest of the card. The areas that of the petal that are sort of behind another petal, those are going to be the darkest. I lay down that dark color first and then I rinse off my brush and go back in with just a little bit of water, sort of blend that out. And you can see with even just one color of Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor, you can get quite a nice range of light to dark. But I am going in and putting one more darker color in a few spots just to darken things up. So like for example on this I use Spice Marmalade first and then I do go in with just a very little bit of Rusty Hinge Distress Ink Reinker to create the darkest areas of the shadows. Again you'll see I'm using my heat gun to dry that before moving on to those 
two little petals up at the top of this flower so that I can color those or paint those without them bleeding down into that lighter color that is right below. And then again adding that darker rusty hinge ink and blending things out with a clean brush that just has a little touch of water on it. Now I followed, like I said, that same technique to do the rest of the flowers. And then I'll do the same thing here on the leaves. Just adding that darker color and blending it out with water. And this is also the Distress Reinker used as the watercolors. Now you could also use um, your any type of watercolors that you love. Like I said, I just really love these because they're so bold and vibrant. Now for these tiny little stems, I find I have more control if I just use a pen here. This is a very fine tip pen and I use that to color in the stems. Now this is our new vintage postcard cling stamp and this is what is so fun. You can create all of these different postcard effects with the different floral stamping and then go back with just this one stamp and give it that final postcard look. So I'm just putting this onto my stamp positioning tool. I have trimmed off the part of this that's over on the left hand side that says, I think it's like hand stamped by. You could also mask it off. I'm inking this again with that Toffee Crunch Memento ink and stamping it a couple of times. This allows me to just gradually darken the color until it's just how I want it to be. And you can see it. I just love how that finishes off the card. Now this is a standard A2 size card panel. So the watercolor paper is four and a quarter by five and a half and then it can just go on to a standard size card. Now this little stamp is from our Time Cling Stamp Set again with the Toffee Crunch ink. I'm just stamping that up in the corner for some added interest, more of a vintage effect. And then to finish things off, I will be stamping my sentiment. This is from our Carefree Wishes sentiment set. And you'll find with this postcard design, you always have the perfect little spot there under the Please Deliver To to add your sentiment. And I just love this sentiment for birthdays. Now this I am stamping in jet black archival ink because I wanted it to stand out uh, from the background postcard stamping. Now this is just gouache paint. You could also use like an acrylic paint and I'm just dabbing my finger in it and sliding it across some parts of the card along the edges. I think this brightens things up and gives some life to the vintage look and also adds to that distressed design. So again, just putting a little on my finger and swiping it on, you could also use a paintbrush. And here is a look at that finished card. Now I find this layout is really great, especially if you're like Mojo needs some help, just grab your favorite floral stamps and do the same layout, but stamp different stamps. And that's what I've done here. For this one, I'm using our uh, Blooming Bunch stamp. And here you can see I've done that postcard effect. I added some text script stamping to that along with the sentiment and just a little bit different placement. And this is our Springtime Sigh Cling Stamp which I added just over on the left hand side. You can see this time I've stamped this up much higher onto the postcard and I added a little bit more of that gouache paint to give it a bright vintage look. And then finally this is our cling stamp unforgettable and again following the same technique I've stamped this over on the left and then left some room to add that sentiment Thanks bunches over on the right hand side. I thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and be sure to hit that bell so that you get notified of all of our future uploads. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And I've linked all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. And here is the supply list as promised. Thanks for watching.